Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about a really important topic, which is using the login form demo job to basically kickstart our more advanced form projects. So we can find this job under load example job, full applications, login form. And what login form basically does is it kind of, it handles all of that nitty gritty uh, business, if you will, of creating a login form. So notice we can create accounts. Uh, of actually handling the login process and then also gives an example of of how we then password protect pages right so uh, the whole point of using login form job is to essentially have user accounts we then use the uh, unique IDs from that uh, user account creation process to make sure that um, that only validated users can access content on a page and so I just wanted to give a basically a quick overview of, of some of the intricacies of this job so that if you are building your own applications, uh, you can have a little bit better understanding of how some of the backend stuff is working here. So first things first, if you do start working with this job, please note that we do need to take this uh, login table right here and run this SQL against your own database. So when we do, it looks a little something like this. And so you notice here we have two records, um, and we have username, password, email, kind of all the standard stuff that you'd expect in a login form. Uh, but key here is notice that we have this ID column. And this is one of the, the huge concepts of this process, which is, um, oh, excuse me, let me get the right table here, which is that um, we're letting the database handle a really important part of this process, which is assigning unique IDs to users. So obviously a login system uh, would be uh, pretty ineffective if we didn't have a way to uniquely identify users. And so uh, we do that in the database by essentially creating a primary key field that auto increments. And so again, this is already done for us in the job, but this is just one of those key factors of doing this type of work is we do need to have a unique record that auto increments. Point being that when we uh, add records to this table right here, and we would do that through this create account page right here, that user is always going to get a unique ID. We're then going to use this ID right here to then perform other operations. So what do I mean by that? Well, when we run the login form, we have a couple things that we need to do. We obviously need to verify the user, but then if the user uh, credentials check out, we need to save some information through a database call about that user so that other things can happen down the road. And other things is a broad category because it depends on what your application does. So maybe you want to uh, bring up a, a, a purchase history, like we're going to take a look at in this job, or maybe it's, um, you know, favorite books, you know, depends on your application. But obviously the way uh, to do that is almost always going to be the same. It's query the database. If the user checks out, save some information about that user, and then perform queries later on. And so we actually do that uh, right here. So in this query module, um, and I should just say this login form page right here, it just submits to itself. Minor detail, but just in case you're wondering where this logic happens, uh, the page name and page action is the same. So it just means when we hit submit right here, we're just gonna redirect back to this login page right here. The, the core functionality then happens in this query module and here's where we're actually authenticating the user right here. So we're running this SQL code here. We don't care about what this means, just you can ignore this. But the key is, what the SQL query is basically doing is it's looking for user records. And so if I scroll down to the code to run after query right here, essentially what it says is, if the number of records found was not equal to zero, which would only happen if we had a matching record, that is if the username and password were correct, only if that's the case, well, we go through and start doing uh, some things. We're essentially doing two things here. The first thing is we're going to use a bunch of PHP sessions right here and stow away some of these values from the database. So wherever we see the dollar sign login, that's just the raw database query. And notice we have username, email, and level. And that's what we have here, username, email, and level, right? So we're just taking those database values and we're gonna save them in PHP sessions. One of the most important PHP sessions is this guy right here. So notice we're taking the user ID right here. And again, this is the unique value. And we're gonna put that in a session variable called FB entry ID. 
These two guys are going to be uh, really important in just a second. So notice session name, notice session FB entry ID. Finally, uh, we do have a little bit of logic here that says if we have successfully logged in, we're going to redirect based on user level. If you're not using user levels, you can ignore this. But just the idea is um, there's lots of different types of logic that we can perform now that we have some values. So in this case, we're looking at the, uh, the level of the user. Notice we're an admin right here, which means if we are an admin, we're going to go to adminprotected.php. If we're not an admin, we'll go to standardprotected.php. So OK, so these two pages then are where we had after a successful login. And remember these two values right here, entry ID and session name. So if we scroll down now, here is that admin page. So here is adminprotected.php. And here now is how we actually handle the user authentication. So it's in PHP top code. And it basically says, if the session value is not set, we're going to redirect to the login.php page. Right? You have to go through the login process successfully. Otherwise, you're just going to bounce back to login.php. And then we also have our admin check right here. We're going to ignore this for now, but again, this is just an example of some more advanced checking that you could perform. But this is key right here. If session name is not set, redirect to login.php. So for example, then what I can do is I can go to the login page and I can type in a valid username, which in this case is Matt and Sample. So that's just, uh, oops, excuse me, that's just a record right here, Matt and Sample. And I got to bring up my form here. And when I submit now, notice we're going to redirect to adminprotected.php. Now again, remember that logic that we had said, unless session name was set, we're going to redirect back to login.php. And we can actually test that. So I can load up Chrome right here. I can paste in that same address. So admin protected, admin protected. And notice now, because I haven't actually logged in with Chrome, we're just going to get redirected to login.php. Right? So I just keep typing that in, always going to go back to login. Now, that's the first step. So in other words, in this job, any job then that we want to secure, we would simply copy and paste this code right here. That's all you'd have to do. So if I had a new page and I want it password protected, I'll just create a new page and I'll just open its PHP top code block up and I'll just say paste that in. And I should actually say we'll probably want to start a session as well. So that's all I have to do. Now this is now a password protected page. Right? I cannot visit this page unless I've logged in. However, that's not the only thing we can do. So the other big key to this then, of course, is how do we then make sure that uh, we can perform some other actions? So we're validating users. That's good. But here then is an example of us doing some other interesting stuff. In this case, querying a database based on the user ID. So remember I said in the login script we had two really important values. So remember this login page right here. Down in the code to run after query block, we had two really important values. We had the session name. This is what we're using to say, are we validated? This guy is what we're actually using for doing more interesting operations. So this entry ID, again, remember, is going to be unique. right? There can only be one of this. So if I just take entry ID, I can now use that in this query to say select all the records from login demo where the user ID equals session FB entry ID. And by the way, if you're not familiar with tokens, probably a good idea to check out the uh, tokens demo job. But here's just basically the session token, the session variable name is FB entry ID. Now, this table, login demo, has a matching user ID. And this user has two records, garden gnome and hose. And so because we have matching records, and because we're validated, we're now going to perform that query, and we're actually returning these values. Now that's for querying values. Maybe we want users to be able to update values as well. We're not going to take a look at how to do that specifically, but all we would have to do, for example, is I could just uncheck run in page top, check create dynamic form elements, and I now actually get these values in form fields right here. right? And so then I could add a submit button and a confirmation page, and then I could then basically say, in my update statement, use that session variable, use that token to update my page. So that is a quick look. Of course, this is meant to be the broad overview. If you have any questions, please feel to contact us at any time at info at rackforms.com. Thanks for watching.